Good evening and welcome to my hobby bench. Uh, this is going to be a quickie, we hope, or maybe you hope. I don't know if I hope that. What I've got on the bench today is uh, my YSFZ63 engine. And lucky for me, the thing that arrived in the mail today was the check valve that I ordered from uh, Central Hobbies. So for those of you that might need a check valve, they have them in stock. The part number is YS0405, check valve or airplane it says. So that arrived today and I also already had a brand new 10 ounce Dubro fuel tank, some fuel tubing and some filters and I just wanted to make a quick video to show how this thing is plumbed. Now I know that not all YS engines are plumbed exactly the same for the fuel system and I'm also going to do a pressure check pressure test, which I've already done. But what I referred to was, I found the YS FZ63 instructions online. In fact, in the uh, description of most of my latest videos, there's a link to uh, Google Drive where I've got all these manuals that I've got online. This one is not there yet, but it will be soon. But if you do a search for YS FZ63 manual, you'll find a link to this. So this manual is awesome. It tells you everything you need to know. And it also shows, shows how you plumb the system. So I've plumbed my system exactly the way they have it here, which is from the output of the regulator goes to the needle valve, the high speed needle valve or the carb. And right here on this uh, outlet here, is actually the pressure line that's the funny thing is that these two actually cross I always have fuel draw on the as I'm looking at it from behind on the uh, left side of the tank and vent on the right side that's just how I've always done fuel tank setups well the front of the YS engine is exactly the opposite the left side uh, input or output, however you want to put it, for the crankcase actually goes to the vent line. And in that vent line is where you put the check valve. And it's going this way so that airflow can be pumped into here, but it can't go back this way. So therefore you build up pressure in the tank. The right side line is the, the line that actually has a fuel filter in line and it goes to the clunk that will pick up the fuel um, from the tank. So the way I do a pressure test here is I just sit here and you know, first we'll test it here to make sure there's no pressure on it. Listen, you didn't hear anything. So I'm just going to sit here and crank this thing over about 15, 20 times. And what I'm doing now is I'm building pressure in the tank. And this is one of the tests I did today when I put this all together, was I wanted to make sure that the engine was at least healthy enough to build pressure. And it is. I don't know if I, I got the throttle fully open. I don't know if that really matters too much. One of the YS engines I ran a few years back, I think it was the 140, might have said something like, with the throttle open, you know, rotate the prop 10 times and then close the throttle and rotate it 10 times. These instructions, I'll read to you what they say. They don't say that. So there should be pressure in this tank right now. Now, listen. Uh, that was pretty weak. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear that. There was just a little... Just a little noise that maybe I didn't, I don't know, I'm not sure if it matters what the throttle position is when you're building pressure, it might. Let me open the throttle up fully. Do this again. There might just be too much noise, ambient noise here for you to hear this. Now if I had fuel, <laughs> in the tank, you'd see it squirt out if you pulled the wrong fitting. And that's why, which one is this? This is the suction. This is, this is the line that I'm gonna pull 
at the end of a run. This is the line that is the clunk is sucking fuel in here and then it's going to be sending it into the carb here. So that's the line I would pull because if you pull this line, it's going to squirt fuel right out because I did that several times with one of my other YS engines when I was first uh, playing with them. Of course, I in other videos of my YS engines, at least a couple of them, I had T fittings in line, in each of the lines, and I'm not really sure why I did that. It was just more fittings. Let's see if you can hear it now. Um, I'll get this right up to the mic. Hopefully you heard that. So it did build pressure. So that tells me that at least, you know, this tank can hold some pressure anyway, and it's healthy. Now this is a brand new tank. Now one of the things you'll notice here is I left these lines, the brass lines coming out of the tank fairly long for a reason, and it's because I really wanted to push the line, the fuel line on there as far as I could because the hobby store did not have those little clips to actually hold these in place. Uh, and this is all new fuel line too, so it should have you know good stickability to these things. Now the other thing I could do if I was really concerned about it, which I'm not, is get like uh, just use like you know twist ties from uh, bread or any a lot of products you have secure the item against the card with twist ties you can just take that and just kind of lightly tie that but I'm really not that concerned about it because as far as I know from what I've read this this engine and maybe larger engines might produce a little bit higher pressure but I think I was reading something on RC Universe that said something like uh, and this was for one of the bigger engines, the 120 or 140. It may build between 6 and 9 PSI. Uh, and that's not an awful lot. Um, and I don't believe that this thing is probably going to build more than 3 to 5 PSI. So if a fuel tank can't handle 3 to 5 PSI, then you shouldn't buy that fuel tank. I've always used Dubro tanks uh, for every YS engine. I've had and every time I've had a YS engine I've bought a brand new tank and done all new brand new plumbing and everything so let me read what this instruction says here for startup it says remove tube B from the filler remove tube A from the check valve then fill the tank yeah they want you to well that's just to fill the tank okay if the tank is filled or under pressure remove tube A first which A would be the vent line. They're saying, yeah, they're saying A would be the vent line. Does that make sense to me? Yeah, I guess that means that they probably wouldn't squirt fuel out. Maybe if I, maybe I was wrong. Maybe if I pull this line at the end of the session and the tank is not empty, I think it's going to squirt fuel out. So I probably don't want to do that. So yeah. I think I could just as easily pull that line to make sure this is the vent line. And yeah, that's the way to do it. So I was wrong when I first said I was going to pull this line. That would actually result in squirting of fuel. And it does squirt quite a ways. <laughs> Trust me, I know that. Okay, so it says fuel eject from <laughs> eject if the tube B is removed while tank is pressurized. Yeah, tell me how I know that. I don't I thought I had caught that on video. But I didn't go and watch all of my other YS videos, but I could have swore that I caught that on video, but maybe I didn't. I don't know. It was, it was humorous. I was like, oh, nice. Open the needle valve two and a half turns from the fully closed position. Mine is. Open the throttle fully and slowly turn the propeller ten times. This primes the system by pressurizing the tank and sending fuel to the carburetor. Close the throttle to the idle position and connect the glow plug battery. The engine is now ready for starting. I could have swore that, like I said, that I had one of these engines, a larger one, that said after you prime it ten times with the throttle open, close it, and then do it another ten times. Because um, I know I actually did that on one of my videos. But anyway, so this engine is ready to go. It's uh, I, The only thing I haven't done yet is I haven't put a new OSF glow plug in here. I plan on putting a brand new one in there. Now, this engine was run... At least once, I can smell that. The fellow that I bought it from, he didn't. I didn't ask a lot of questions because when he said ninety dollars for the engine, I just kind of my jaw dropped and I was like, uh, just scrambling to get the money out. 
So I didn't ask him a lot of questions about it. I did ask him when it was run last and he said 10 years ago. Well, this engine feels silky smooth and I, I think I mentioned in one of the comments that I did remove the carb and the rear cover and looked inside and it looks sweet as hell. In fact, if you're interested, and it only takes a second, let me do that here real quick since I got video going and I'll show you guys how nice the inside of this looks. I really didn't want to do this too many times because I didn't want to take a chance on damaging the gasket because that would be bad. But, what the hell. And the gasket sets for this are out of stock. I still have this in frame. Yeah. Let's zoom in here and keep it right here. Now the other thing about this is I'm holding the prop because I don't want to misalign the crankshaft to the backplate hub because there is those of you that have never seen the inside of a YS engine, it does engage in a in a thing. Hopefully you can see how pristine that is. See that thing just above my thumbnail tip? That's where the crankshaft into the connecting rod engages. I don't know if you can really get the beauty of seeing how clean that rear bearing is. But suffice it to say, it's really clean. In fact, if you didn't know any better, you'd think that this engine had never been run and that was just factory oil, but I can smell the fact that that's, uh, I'm not gonna tighten that down quite yet. I can smell that it's been run. Not much, but it has been run. So I'm super, super excited about getting this engine out on the stand. The only thing that's stopping me from doing it very quickly is that there's still two engines on my stand right now. And they are the Weber Speed 61 and my ASP46 ABC engine. And I want to run each of those engines one more time and make videos before I put this on there. But man, it's really hard to hard to keep that keep one of those in well I know I'm gonna have to put this on where the Weber is. But it's really hard to uh, not just go take those off right now and put this on there and run this engine because that's how excited I am about this engine. I've got this carb set up just like it says from the factory low speed needle one full turn open from close high speed needle two and a half turns I'm going to pressurize this again just to make sure that I didn't hose something up here so, so much for this being a short video. Now, this prop is the one that actually came on the engine. I've never seen or had one of these master air screw props before. It's a strange color. I don't know if it's a vintage prop or what the deal is with this prop. Um, but it's a 12.6. It's one of the recommended sizes of prop for this engine. Okay, let's see if I can get that sound. Now, I'm pinching this... I'm pinching this. I didn't hear anything. I'm going to do the other line where I heard the little 
because I want to make sure that I still can build pressure here, make sure I didn't hose something up by removing that carburetor and back cover. Yeah, I heard the little I hope you did too. So anyway, that was turned out to be a quick look inside. But what it really was was just a little bit of show and tell about how I set up this fuel system plumbing for this YSFZ63 engine. And the next time you see this engine on this channel, hopefully that propeller will be spinning at a rather high RPM. Thank you.